everybody. Oh, hey guys. I didn't know you were here. Well, I was just about to pull out the Tuliom TL200T. Let's go check it out. Okay, so here it is, the Tuliom TL200T and all its components that it came with. Not very well heard of the Tuliom company. They're a Canadian company. I'm pretty sure about that. Not 100%, but I think. Um, this is a high frequency TIG and a stick welding machine. It is a dual voltage. Right now I have it on 240 volt. I have it, uh, I made an extension cord to hit the dryer outlet. That's how I'm doing it right now. So in the back you got your power button. In the back you get your power button, your gas port. And then your input there. So it comes with a three pronger it attached to it. That's a three prong and then it has an adapter to get down to 120. We'll go ahead and kick on kicks right up I've had this for a few months now I've used it a good amount and um, no complaints here honestly it was hundred and sixty dollars high frequency TIG I bought it because I'm like I don't think so I don't believe it and I was I was it it performed much better than I expected it to so Stick welds really nice. TIG welds pretty nice too. Even on 120, it TIGs quite decent. Stick is a little, it it sticks on 120, but you're bound to trip breakers. It's that's just a fact of life when you're using the 120 power. So here, it's a, you just have your digital screen here. It's very simple. Is your would be your your amperage knob. And then MMA would be your stick welding, and then for TIG, switch it over to TIG. All right, here you have your positive. Over here you have your negative for your stick welding. We do that on DSEP, direct current electrode positive. The TIG's gonna be DSEN, direct current electrode negative. So we'll have to swap some stuff around. But I figured it was already set up for stick, so we'll start off with some stick and then we'll swap it over to TIG. Like I said, this is all the stuff it came with. Ground clamp, cheap, but very much to be expected. Not a big deal. Stinger is actually kind of beefy, but kind of weird. But actually, it's not too bad. I, as I say that as it's broken somehow. Whatever though, it's not bad, honestly. It's really not bad came with a TIG torch here. TIG torch, which is pretty decent. There's your, your button for your high frequency. Came with this clear gas tube here. Um, did not come with that regulator, I don't believe. I don't think it did. No, it definitely did not. That was, I had that. Anyhow, it's very light. 13 pounds, totally maneuverable. Get it in and out of tough spots, whatever. This and that. Doesn't take up a lot of space. Here's your manual. Duty cycle 60% at 200 amps on the TIG. That's good. 60%, 155 amps on the stick. That's, that's good too. I have never hit the duty cycle on this. But but yeah, I was, I'm just gonna say right off the bat, I was thoroughly impressed with the way that this welded for being $160. It's one of my favorite machines that I have, honestly, and it's by far the cheapest. I'm just gonna run a couple of rods. 60, 10, 70, 18, all in 100 amps. Just to show you that the machine does actually work as I say that it does work. It's not bad. It's honestly not bad. There's plenty of good rods for these machines. I would recommend to my viewers a 6011 or 718. I cleaned this piece of steel up. They're both about an eighth inch, three sixteenths. That one's about a quarter. Cleaned this one up just because you should. 
And this one, I left wicked rusty because I'm gonna show you that it does actually power through that rust. It's really quite impressive. But you do whatever you want. So yeah, we'll keep it short and sweet and then we'll go on and take it. Ground clamp. I don't know if you guys could see that. We're at 100 amps. 220 volt, so we'll go from there. Clean steel first. is actually pretty good for this 1A6010 but as you can see it keeps losing its arc they always do that on the 6010 for whatever reason so there's your 6010 amps it's not completely cleaned up it's, it's a little bit ugly but uh I don't have my grinder on here right now, I just got this brush so it is what it is, but it welds, run a couple more. have to keep a really tight arc to keep that arc it, it's not normally you don't have to keep it so tight but this these types of machines you do to, to keep the arc with the 6010 it's not a big deal though I get the grinder because wire brushes just pretty much suck. Stack of 6010, nothing beautiful. Nothing that ain't gonna do what that's supposed to do though is hold shit together, steel, you know. Okay, we'll go 100 amps on the 7018 as well, and we'll go from there. Yeah, that's real nice. Yeah, I love when 7018 does this. This means you're doing something right. Just kind of peels off like that. Big pieces. Ooh, yeah. I mean, that's pretty. That's nice. So, the 7018, look how flat that laid. So, you got 7018 next to 6010. What did I tell you? 7018. Beautiful. Holds an arc the entire time, no issues here, nice puddle. Yep. Right there, 7018. Nice little bead there, nice and flat. Laid down nice, here. Get a stack of 60 tens. Not so pretty, but they'll do the job. You know what I mean? All in 100 amps. So yeah, it's totally capable. And down here, you just have some more 7018 as well. Also pretty good looking, nice and laid down, nice and flat on the uh, on the metal there. 7018, much prettier than the 6010, pretty much always. I don't know. 
718 is a little more particular when it will what it likes to weld. I want to try something real quick. All right, I just turned it up to 155. I'm going to see if I can't cut the steel with the 6010 welding rod. You can actually cut steel plate, whatever, pipes, anything with a welding rod if it's hot enough. It doesn't leave a clean cut, but it will cut it. And you just kind of like gouge it. If you've never done that or know what it is, you just kind of like, you're just kind of like pushing the metal, you just kind of flick it away. And this did an okay job. Yeah, if you want to get all the way through this pizza channel iron, take an inch off, you could, and it wouldn't be clean, but it would cut it, it would. Know what I mean? I'll just burn through some rust with the 6010, because that's the rod for that, and show you guys that, uh, you know, it's capable. And 6010 is not even horrible. So yeah, that left a nice little bead there. So you don't have to clean your workpiece. Don't listen to what they're teaching you at all. It shows level of capability. You know what I mean? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'm pretty much like dip in the puddle. That's how close the arc is. So just get a 6011. It's trust me. All right, uh, let's uh, set up the TIG and uh, be right back. Okay, so we're all set up to do a little bit of TIGging. As you can see here, in this time in the positive terminal of my Tuleon welder, that is the ground clamp. And this connection right here would be the gas to the torch, and then that would be like the high freak, high frequency start. Basically, high frequency is you just lower your tungsten to the workpiece and push this button and the arc will start. I wanted a high frequency because I was sick of gunking up my tungsten um, with scratch start and all that stuff. So high frequency is just better. And usually you don't see it on the lower end machines, cheaper machines. So when I saw this with the high freak, I was definitely intrigued. Didn't think it would work so well, but it's actually not too bad. And I'll show you. That over there is argon gas got my switch set to tig now turn around 220 volts still during my practice runs i found that 100 amps was pretty much pretty good spot for my workpiece and all that stuff size of the tungsten it's a 332 tungsten i think it's a great tip and we're all sharpened up Buffed out a small spot just to get this in. And uh, let's do it. The wind was giving me a hard time, so I moved into the corner and hopefully I can just block out the wind just enough to uh, to show you guys how the Tuleon High Frequency TL 200T TIG welder, TIG slash stick, performs. Even the slightest wind is just, you gotta be inside. It's just blowing all the gas right away. So that wasn't too bad.
I'm sure that there's some contamination on the piece of steel here too. But I could see some holes right there that were in there from grinding off old welds and whatnot. The metal's spreading out nicely though. It's doing its job. The conditions aren't great, but it is doing a decent job, especially these. And it is a decent TIG machine. It truly is. I'm no amazing TIG welder. I'm not saying that, but I can. And this thing's, this thing's great, especially for if you're just at home doing stuff. TIG welding, stick welding, you would never need anything else. So. Slick looking thing too, huh? Yeah. But not bad for the price, $160. Stick and TIG welder, dual voltage. Exceeded my expectations. They have other products too. I have never tried any of their other products. But, you know, if you're in the market for uh, something like this, this might be worth checking out. Thanks for watching, guys.